Delaney. Rod, the community really came together to help this business. They did, Kimberly and Devin, and, and the world of rocks is so much more than the name. They want you to come in and touch and experience things like this rock. But watch, this the experience is so much more when they have the video screen and they have the specialized equipment so that you can get close-ups of it. But this is the real thing. It's called an Oreodon. It was a goat back about a million years ago. And you see these brown teeth? Well... If you put a black light on them, they actually glow. It's kind of hard to see in our light, but it's there. And that's what helped make this piece so valuable and why the thief decided to steal it. High definition color security cameras recorded what happened on December 1st. The thief came into the store, spied the fossil price tagged at $1,000. It was so cool, he slipped it into his jacket pocket. No one even noticed for a week. Phil Donovan is co-owner. We're a mom and pop shop. Mm -hmm. This really hurts us when someone takes something this major and this rare and this special. What galls Phil's wife and co-owner read? He stayed in the shop for at least 15 minutes thereafter. He talked to like two of the staff members after he stole it. He like, played with our microscope, took his business card, and then left. Yeah. Just like the nerve. So over the weekend, they posted the theft video and stills of his face on Facebook, and it didn't take long for people to weigh in. Everyone was so supportive trying to find it for us or find someone who knew him, but um, you know, that's how he knew that we knew. Fast forward to today and the totally unexpected. Watch the front window here as the security cameras record the same guy wearing more of a disguise slide a sealed box inside the front door and then leave. Inside was Christmas wrap, the stolen fossil, and a note apologizing. So it pains me that I could be this thoughtless. I'm full of shame, regret, and remorse. I have spoken with my family, and despite the shock and disappointment, they are supportive and recommend professional help. I'm glad that you brought it back. Don't ever come back. And I hope that you don't do this to somebody else, you know? Indeed. Now, this is the box that it came in. This is the note. It is typewritten, so you can't tell who wrote it. No handwriting here. And uh, Reed tells me she doesn't believe a word that isn't it. Back to you. Oh, Rod, I'm just wondering, what are police saying about this? Anything? Well, uh, we talked to Ypsilanti police today, earlier in the day, uh, when they didn't know about the, the stuff being returned. Okay. And so uh, they were investigating. They're very curious about the situation. Now, Reed uh, and Phil are very upset. They are not sure they want to press charges, but they are saying that they'll take guidance from the Ypsilanti police. Usually, even though you give something back like this, it's still a theft, sure. and the police are likely to want to press charges. Yeah but the power of social media in this case. All right, Rod, thanks. Mm -hmm. Rain started early, hasn't let down much. Over here with Ben now, I do know a lot of people who would this time of year rather see snow than rain because a little more True. festive, but you don't have to move the rain as much. Right, <laughs> and, or and driving you don't have on to it. drive in it. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. even better, but tomorrow it's going to be just the opposite. So the showers are going to be a round of rain tonight. Mm -hmm. Even though we've got a little bit of a break, you can see everything starting to redevelop out here towards the lake. This is where the cold front is. That's going to get a little bit closer to us tonight. So late evening into the early part of the overnight, do expect to see a few more showers of rain. And then as that cold air takes hold, tomorrow it's snow. Now this isn't going to be a lot as far as the amounts go, but coming up, we're going to talk about the impact it's going to have for both the morning and the afternoon commutes tomorrow. Rest of the evening, Enjoy the mild temperatures, even though it's going to be under clouds and showers. Numbers are not going to be this warm for the rest of the entire forecast. We'll show you how cold it's going to get in just a few minutes, guys. And now to an important Help Me Hank scam alert after several victims have lost thousands of dollars in schemes. Yeah, they all received threatening phone calls or messages that motivated them to send money or gift cards. And now police are putting out the warning, hoping to keep you safe. Consumer investigator Hank Winchester joins us. And Hank, this is concerning. It is, because we're not just talking about $100. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars in some cases. Uh, one victim, in fact, lost hundred grand because of the scam. The thieves targeting the elderly in Troy and South Sadly, these scammers have been making out with a lot of money. We are seeing an uptick in frauds. Frauds have been growing steadily over the last several years. And, you know, the more we figure them out, these scammers who are professionals doing this, you know, all day, every day, um, they're figuring out new tricks. The victims in Troy, the scammers likely out of state, but preying on you. One person lost $100,000 money spent on gift cards, sending them off to what they thought was a grant program that would make them a ton of money. 
The victim um, got a call from someone who said they were from the United Nations. It was a scam. When free things come our way, we all get excited. The Better Business Bureau and police now tracking these local scams. Scams where people think they're getting something great for just a little investment. Troy police concerned about the huge amounts of money that have been lost recently and the deceptive practices of these thieves. Well, once you're engaging in that conversation, they are using their tools and tricks, which they do all day scamming people, and they may be able to convince you. Most of the victims asked to send gift cards or to wire money. One lost 30000 another about ten k, And the victim who lost six figures thought that he would be receiving a big check in the mail. That check never came. Don't be afraid to ask questions. You could ask for a letter, or you could simply hang up and call back the published number for the agency. Now remember, if you get a call from a number you don't recognize, just don't answer it. If somebody makes a threat over the phone or via email telling you that you must wire money or deal with, a, wire money rather, or buy a gift card, understand that it is likely just a scammer trying to take advantage of you. Never wire money or send a gift card to a stranger. Remember, that's somebody just trying to rip you off. And finally, if you get one of those calls or a strange email, make police aware so they can track that activity. Uh, as you saw there with Troy, they've been tracking this actively and they've seen people in that zip code being targeted yeah. either via email or via cell phone. Well, do police know where these people are working from? They're not local. No, are they're they? not. The bad guys. And, no, they're not. And that's unfortunately the really hard part when we talk to the FBI. These guys, nine times out of ten, they're overseas. Yeah, they have no connection to anybody in Troy. They're and just hoping to get lucky. I really can't think of one legitimate reason to pay anybody with a gift card. Any anything you're being asked for by a, a, a business, an agency. That's the tip off. And, and a lot of times it's local utilities. They'll say yeah. you can settle your DTE bill by sending us an Amazon card. No, it doesn't work that way. So much. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Hank. Sure. And more news tonight. Lyon Township just hired its first full time firefighter, along with two full time captains. And while more firefighters are a blessing in any community, Jason Colthorpe explains why they were overdue in Lyon Township, where the population has shot up in recent years, and so have the emergencies. Interesting day. That's how Susan McMahon jokingly describes July 26th. She was at a stoplight waiting to turn left. I look to my left and I see this gravel hauler coming so fast. She threw her Honda Pilot in reverse and only made it two feet when that truck took the turn too fast and slammed into her. Thank God I did throw it in reverse and thank God I didn't have any cars behind me because I think he would have just gone right up on top of me and smushed my car. Fire department was there so fast. I, I mean, I think I was still on the phone and they're showing up. Susan was okay. The emergency response time even better, but that hasn't always been guaranteed. Minutes do matter, there's no doubt about it. Nate Steros was just promoted from part-time lieutenant to full-time captain, and he knows the investment in staff and equipment was necessary for Lyon Township. That's grown by seven to 10 percent every year for the last five years. If we can get a truck on the road, get there, start uh, working on stabilizing any incident, whether it's a fire, car accident, medical emergency, whatever the case is. And more jobs also means better training. 30 years ago, you had 17 minutes to get out of your home after your smoke detector activated. Today, that, that's down to three minutes. I am just really amazed with how the fire 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 department handled it, so to actually get full time in there, glory hallelujah, because that they are just amazing. Yeah, the rejoicing is real because before the department would have several shifts that were uncovered, and now they're pretty much staffed 24 7. Welcome news to the folks out here in Lyon Township, Jason Colthorpe, Local 4. Yeah, definitely yeah. growing. All right, time now for a check of the national stories you'll see ahead at 630 on NBC Nightly News. Lester Holt in New York with a preview of what's coming up tonight. Hi, Lester. Hey, Kim and Devin, coming up, our NBC News exclusive, the former Boeing insider going public about his safety concerns and the desperate effort to account for the missing after a volcano explodes in New Zealand. We'll have the latest from there when we see you coming up on NBC Nightly News. Yep, we look forward to those stories and more. Lester, we'll see you in about 20 minutes. Thanks.
Okay. It is the most accomplished double play duo in baseball history. Alan Trammell was finally inducted into the Hall of Fame last year, but his longtime teammate, his partner on all those double plays, has been left behind. Last night, the Hall of Fame again snubbing the great Lou Whitaker, leaving Tigers fans to wonder if he'll ever join Trammell in Cooperstown. Tonight, Jamie Edmonds, not far from Michigan and Trumbull, where fans are making their case for sweet Lou. What better place to come to talk about Lou Whitaker and his legacy than Nemo's, the bar that's just a block from Old Tiger Stadium, a place where Whitaker and his teammates would frequent. They would sit over here at this corner table, you know, sometimes, and if there was a bunch of them, they would go into the back room. During the Tigers' heyday, the players were one of the guys, and the patrons here became their biggest fans. Hence, today, there's an overall sentiment of disgust over the slight of Lou Whitaker once again. It just seems like, uh, for whatever reason, he's just not getting his just due. The Modern Era Baseball Committee voted two players into the Hall of Fame yesterday. Whitaker, not one of them. He received six votes out of a needed 12. I thought for sure he would get in. Chris Brown and Roger Castillo host a podcast, Tigers SRD. He's among the top five second baseman of all time in terms of stats. He has a higher war than Derek Jeter. They say the numbers speak for themselves. Whitaker was the rookie of the year in 1978. He has five all-star berths and three gold gloves. He and Alan Trammell turned 1,918 double plays. Tram is in, Sweet Lou is not. It's not over for him. He's got another chance in two years, and, and we're still holding out hope that he'll get in. These guys say if the Hall of Fame won't honor Whitaker, it's time the Tigers retire his jersey. In Detroit, Jamie Edmonds, Local 4. At the least, two more years to wait. I'd love to see Lou get I don't know much about it, but I just love that people are rallying yeah, around to try yep. to you yep. know, make that sure nice. yeah. Still ahead, it's a common household item sending young children right now to the hospital. Dr. Frank McGeorge will join us with what parents should be doing to prevent toothbrush injuries. But first, a teenager facing jail time, what he's accused of doing and how police tracked him down when we come right back.